All right, today we're going to remove the side cover. Uh, the side cover has a seal in it. The crankshaft goes through the seal. And if we look here, this is the power takeoff side. The power takeoff side has a three quarter shaft right here, and it has a key slot so we can put different pulleys, clutches, any kind of mechanism we want on the engine. So if we look here, what we want to do is detorque this. Um, in a nice pattern. We don't just want to pull one out and then pull one out and then pull one out because that can cause warpage in anything aluminum. So we want to go around this and create a diagonal pattern. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six bolts on this. So we're going to crack these loose and the easiest thing to do is put the motor straight, crack them, crack one. Remember, let's do an eighth turn, crack, crack that one. Let's go diagonal as best we can. Eighth turn. Now I can go around. We'll flip the motor back because we want to <coughs> keep the oil from pouring everywhere. If we, if we have this engine straight up and down, the oil will come out the seal right here. And we want to try to avoid that. So after you get them all cracked loose, where they can actually spin. Right, we will just spin them out. And they could vary in length, so what I do is just put them to the side kind of in the order that I took them out. If they don't vary in length, we can put them all back wherever we want. There are going to be a, an alignment pin. should be a couple alignment pins inside of this because this does need to be aligned properly. You can see here we've got two oil fill plugs. We're going to leave those in. And there's going to be a gasket between these surfaces. And if we look here, these six bolts are all the same length, so we'll park those right back in. Now, if we want to remove this, you just kind of give it a little pull off the oil plug fills should come right off. Notice we have a rubber seal. This keeps dirt and grime and water from coming in and it keeps oil from coming out. Now if we look we're spinning it around we can see that this has a roller bearing for the crankshaft to travel in. The gasket should slowly, let's slowly peel this off. Slowly peel it off and we will put this off to the side. I'll store those up and so that doesn't get damaged and again this is a mating surface so we want to keep that mating surface clean so and up so it'll take a little time here let's park these bolts back that way they don't get lost notice we got two alignment pins here one two and if we pull this up closer we have where we can start to see the internal components we've got our crankshaft connecting rod connecting rod cap and what I'm going to do is I kind of tap the crankshaft in and I'm going to rotate this until I know where the marks are but you can't see them until we get close. And if we look here, there is two dots, one on a tooth and one in between the tooth. This is the timing marks. If that's off one tooth, this engine will not start. So the next thing we're going to do is remove the camshaft. Okay, Camshaft is going to come out we've got our compression release mechanism which will have a little extra credit if you can figure out how it works but i will explain at some point point. and we've got two cam lobes one for the intake one for the exhaust so i'm putting this camshaft off to the side we've got to go inside here and you can see that there is two lifters their lifters go by two names depending on what where you read lifters or tappets we're going to take those out We'll keep those with our valve train components because that is part of our valve train. And after this, you can see that there's oil pouring everywhere in there. I'm going to drain this oil. We'll drain this all into the oil bucket. And then the next proceeding, we will remove our connecting rod and crankshaft, and this will be a bare block. So, connecting rod is attached to the piston. When the we will 
When we disconnect the connecting rod cap, the piston will come out as one assembly.